Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here. Today we have a new episode of Who's Next. We're heading to Phoenix, Arizona to interview Jeffrey Erickson, 12 years old, nicknamed The Jet. He is racing for Nate Clower Motorsports in the number 22 junior late model. Jeffrey, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. First off, we'll get started. Very basic. How old were you when you first started racing? When I first started racing, I was five years old. So you started in quarter midgets, from my understanding. Tell us a little bit about that. What is a quarter midget? What was that like when you were getting your feet wet and started in motorsports? Well, first I started in the quarter midget, and I learned a lot by racing on, at the VSQMA on a track with my brother and learned a lot from him from that. And that's how it first started out with my racing. And then I just loved it and wanted to do it. That's awesome. So when you first started quarter midgets, worked your way up to four USAC national event wins, actually in 2018, that must've been a pretty big accomplishment. What did that feel like? Uh, it felt great, especially racing at Daytona national speedway and Phoenix raceway. It felt amazing going able to have the opportunity to travel across the country and race and very grateful to have that opportunity to do that. Well, you mentioned your older brother, Bradley, who also races. How has he been able to help you, and how have you leaned on him uh, as you've climbed the ranks? Well, he's helped me a lot with uh, teaching me a lot of stuff about setups and racing and lines and a lot of that stuff, and he's really helped me a lot um, racing and very thankful to have him. That's great to hear. It's really cool you guys get to do that together. I know you started racing kid carts at Phoenix Kart Racing. Now, this is interesting to me because this is how I got my start in racing was just a rental go-kart track because I grew up a race fan. That's a road course. So how important has that been and how much have you learned from racing on a road course? Now that there's a lot in uh, the national series, it makes up a significant portion of our schedule. In fact, we're racing at Circuit of the Americas this weekend. Yeah, that's helped a lot. Um especially learning how to open up entries and a lot of car control and a lot more endurance and physical and teaches you how to turn right more and use the track up and just teaches you a lot about it. And it's really fun. So in 2019, after those USAC wins in the quarter midget, you moved to a bandolero. Now tell us the difference between the quarter midget and the bandolero and, and maybe what was the biggest learning curve transitioning from one to the other? Well, the biggest um, thing about the Bandolero is pretty much the driving it does, and it drives a lot different than the quarter midget. It actually has a lot more power and turns a lot nicer and a lot safer and just a lot more fun car to drive. So now on top of that, you've also done a little bit of legend car racing. So we know the difference between a quarter midget and a bandolero. Now, what is the biggest difference between the bandolero and the legend car for people who may not know? Oh, it's a big, there's a huge difference uh, using clutch and shifting. And uh, those are a lot more twitchy and they're really sketchy sometimes, but they're also really fun when you know what you're doing. And once you get out there and have experience. I think the key word for today's episode is going to be transition because now that we've kind of talked about your climb through the ranks from quarter midgets to bandoleros to legend cars, even you've transitioned to stock car racing in a junior late model with Nate Clower, your championship organization you're competing with. That's a full bodied stock car. How big has that transition been and how difficult has that been? Well, it's been a lot different, especially learning how to, uh, conserve tires and it's a lot more physical and turn like entering the corners and using more brakes and really pretty much physical like endurance going 70 laps and it's a lot hotter and a lot bigger car and there's a lot more reaction to the car and yeah it's pretty it's, it's a really big difference well it's really great to be learning now when you're only 12 years old you got a lot of racing ahead of you in fact we want to know what your next race is in the junior late model. Well, my next race is round two of the 5150 junior late models at Madera Speedway. And it's going to be a lot better, I think, than the last one because we learned a lot from the last one. We 
made a lot of improvements from last year. In the first race, we were running top five and top three up in the in the in the whole race basically. And you know, we learned a lot about that and a lot more endurance. And um yeah. That's really great to hear. And one thing a lot of people may not know about you is that you actually come from a racing family. Your dad and your grandfather raced. In fact, they actually raced Indy cars, which the you know highest level of American open wheel racing. How has that impacted you? Do you ever feel pressured by that in any way? No, I don't feel pressured at all because my dad and my grandpa have a lot of experience that they've helped me come when it comes to the track and especially when it the road courses too. I've helped me a lot in the Bandoleros when, and the Legends when he came to road courses helped a lot. And they have a lot of experience with that and other types of racing too. So that helps a lot with me. I can only imagine that must be super useful, a, a great tool, something not a lot of people uh, are able to, to have to lean on their father, grandfather, and their brother even. That's really cool that you all get to share that that mutual connection of of what racing really is. What are your 2022 racing plans now? Well, my 2022 racing plans is try, try to do as many Madeira races as I can and maybe some dirt bike racing and, and maybe maybe even some legend cars. It'd be, it'd be amazing to do all of those. That sounds great. Sounds like a lot of racing on the schedule for this year. We want to play a game called Rapid Fire. It's a great piece of our show on who's next. Are you ready to play? Yes, sir. All right, so you're going to answer uh, your favorite of each of these categories. So the first, your favorite food. Uh, my favorite food is shrimp. Favorite video game? I racing. Of course. Favorite band? ACDC. Awesome. Favorite NASCAR driver? Kyle Busch. Favorite movie? Uh, Ford vs. Ferrari. Great. Favorite superhero? Batman. Favorite TV sh TV show? Outer Banks. Awesome. I love it. So we heard your favorite game is iRacing. It's a racing simulator. I'm super active on there myself. I know that you're an avid iRacer. Obviously, you mentioned you spent a lot of time in there. How has that helped you in your career uh, as far as preparing for races, maybe training, or just even having fun? Yeah, it's helped me a lot, especially when we, my brother and I can train on there and with others, too, and we can learn off each other. And I can mostly learn from him and setting up the cars. And that's helped a lot and sped up my improvements through racing by doing that. And it's really fun. That's awesome. I, I love the sim. I love hearing how it's impacted other drivers. It did the same for me and still does to this day. What are some of your real life racing goals? My real life racing goals is that hopefully in five years, I can still be racing and maybe I'd be really fortunate. I know everybody who races either wants to go in NASCAR, F1, or IndyCar, or Rallycross, or any of those. So any of those would be great. That's like my main goal is just to go there. That's awesome. Well, it's great to have a list of, of goals and milestones to reach throughout your career, Jeffrey. Do you want to thank your sponsors? I know there's a lot of people who support you. We want to hear who they are. Yeah. Uh, my sponsors are Nate Claw and Motorsports, my mom and dad, Fastline Motorsports, LNS Framing, my whole family, and everybody who helps me. Well, on top of that, we all want to be able to follow you and stay in touch. So what are your social media handles so we can stay up to date? Uh, my social media handles are Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. That's how, I, that's how I post and some TikTok too. Awesome. Well, critical to be on all those. Everybody go follow Jeffrey. Thank you for coming on the show today. This has been Anthony Alfredo, and you just saw another episode of Who's Next.